After reading and listening to Doll's House, it's time now to dwell once again into the beginnings of the planet and reading out how all creatures came into being. Good afternoon, everyone. Are you also excited to hear how universe came into being? Without any delay, let's begin Paradise Lost, Book 7th. By the way, if you are also willing to join our awesome reading club, leave us a message below and we'll be too glad to add you. Book 7th. Milton invokes the aid of Urania, once known as the muse of astronomy, but then immediately denies that she is one of classical nine. This is some other muse, the sister of wisdom. Astronomy would have been appropriate because this book contains Raphael's account of God's creation of the world, not just our earth, but the whole universe of amplitude almost immense with stars, numerous and every star perhaps the world of destined habitation. Once again, Satan is off stage. And the chief interest of this book is in the glorious description of the emerging natural world. Last, rose and in, as in dance the stately trees and spread their branches hung with copious fruit. And it is in the invocation to Urania that Milton speaks of his own difficult, almost desperate situation. Fallen on evil days, on evil days, though fallen and evil sun, in darkness and with dangerous compass drowned and solitude. But he is confronted by the thought that Urania will govern his song. And in a face that has sustained many a solitary writer, will fit audience find the few. The argument. Raphael at the request of Adam relates how and wherefore this world was first created, that God after the expelling of Satan and his angels out of heaven, declared his pleasure to create another world and other creatures to dwell therein, sent his own, sent his son with glory and attendance of angels to perform the work of creation in six days. The angels celebrate with Heinz the performance thereof and his reascension into heaven. Descend from heaven, Urania. By that name, if rightly thou art called, whose voice divine following above the Olympian hill I soar, above the flight of Pegasian wing, the meaning, not the name I call. For thou, nor of the muses nine, nor on the top of old Olympus dwelt, but heavenly born before the hills appeared, a fountain flowed, though with eternal wisdom didst converse, wisdom thy sister, and with her didst play, in presence of the Almighty Father, pleased with thy celestial song. Upled by thee into the heaven of heavens, I have presumed an earthly guest and drawn imperial air. Thy tempering, with like safety guided down, return me to my native element, lest from this flying steed undrained, as one Belafon, though from a lower climb dismounted, on the alien. Field I fall, Erinus, there to wander and fall on. Half yet remains unsung, but narrower bound within the visible diurnal sphere, standing on earth, nor wrapped above the pole. More safe I sing with mortal voice, unchanged to horse or mute, though fallen on evil days. On evil days, though fallen, and evil tongues in darkness and with dangers compassed drowned and solitude, yet not alone. While thou visitest my slumbers nightly, or when morn purples the east, still govern thou my song, Urania, and fit audience find so few. But drive far off the barbarous dissonance of Bacchus and his revelers, the race of that wild route that tore the Thracian bard in Drodo, where woods and rocks had ears to rapture, till the savage clamor drowned both harp and voice nor could the muse defend her son. So fail not thou who thee implores, for thou art heavenly, she an empty dream. Say goddess, Say. Wants what ensued when Raphael the effable archangel had forewarned Adam by dire example to be their apostasy, by what befell in heaven to those apostates, lest like 
befall in paradise to Adam or his race, charged not to touch the interdicted tree if they transgress and slight that sole command so easily obeyed amid the choice of all tastes else to please their appetite. Though wandering, he with his, he with his consorted Eve, the story heard attentive and was filled with admiration and deep muse to hear of things so high and strange, things to their thoughts so unimaginable as hate in heaven and war so near peace of God and bliss with such confusion. But the evil soon driven back redounded as a flood on those from whom it sprung, impossible to mix with blessedness, whence Adam soon repealed the doubts that in his heart rose. And now led on yet sinless with desire to know what nearer might concern him, how this world of heaven and earth conspicuous first began, when and whereof created, for what cause, what within Aden or without was done before his memory as one whose drought yet scarce allied still eyes the current stream, whose liquid murmur heard few, her new thirst excites, proceeded thus to ask his heavenly guests, great things and full of wonder in our ears, far differing from his world, thou hast revealed divine interpreter by favor sent down from the Empyrean to forewarn us timely of what might else be our loss unknown, which human knowledge could not reach, for which to the infinitely good we owe immortal thanks, and this ad, and his admonishment, ad, admonishment, admonishment, received with solemn purpose to observe immutably his sovereign will, the end of what we are. But since thou hast vouchsafed, of what we are, but since thou hast vouchsafed gently for our instruction to impart things above earthly thought, which yet concerned our knowing, as to highest wisdom seemed, deign to descend now lower and relate what may no less perhaps while a while as known. How first began this heaven, which we behold distant so high with moving fires adorned innumerable and this which yields or fills all space the abundant the abundant air wide interfused embracing round this flurried earth what cause moved the creator in his holy rest through all eternity so late to build in chaos and the work began how soon absolved if unforbid though mayst unfold what we not to explore the secrets ask of his eternal empire but the more to magnify his works the more we know and the great light of day yet wants to run much of his race though steep suspense in heaven held by Thy voice, thy potent voice he hears, and longer will delay to hear thee tell his generation and the rising birth of nature from the unapparent deep, or if the star of evening and the moon haste to thy audience, night with her will be bring silence, and sleep listening to thee will watch or we can bid his absence till thy song end and dismiss thee ere the morning shine. Thus Adam his illustrious guest besought and thus the godlike angel answered mild. This also thy request with caution asked obtain though to recount almighty works what words or tongue of seraph can suffice? Or he heart of man suffice to comprehend? 
yet what thou canst attain which best may serve to glorify the maker and infer thee also happier shall not be withheld thy hearing such commission from above i have received to answer thy desire of knowledge within bounds beyond abstain to ask not let time own invention hope things not revealed which the invisible king only omniscient hath surprise in night to none communicable in earth or heaven enough is left besides to search and know but knowledge is as food and needs no less a temperance over appetite to know and measure what the mind may well contain or presses else with surfeit and soon turns wisdom to folly as nourishment to wind know then that after lucifer from heaven so call him brighter once amidst the host of angels than that star the stars among fell with his flaming legions through the deep into his place and the great sun returned victorious with his saints the omnipotent eternal father from his throne beheld their multitude and to his son thus spake at least our envious foe hath failed who thought all like himself rebellious by whose aid this inaccessible high strength the seat of deity supreme us dispossessed he trusted to have seized and into fraud drew many whom their place knows here no more yet far the greater part have kept i see their station have yet populous retains number sufficient to possess her realms through wide and this high temple to frequent with ministries due and solemn rites but lest his heart exult in the harm already done to have dispeopled heaven my damage fondly deemed i can repair the detriment if such it be to lose self lost and in a moment will create another world out of one man a race of men innumerable there to dwell not here till by degrees of merit raised they open to themselves at length the way up hither up long obedient stride and earth be changed to heaven and heaven to earth one kingdom joy and union without end meanwhile inhabit lacks ye powers of heaven and do my word begotten son by thee this i perform speak thou and be it done my overshadowing spirit and might with thee i long right for and bid the deep within the pointed bounds be heaven and boundless the deep because i am who fill infinitude nor vacuous the space though i uncircumscribe myself retire and put not forth my godness which is free to act or not necessity and chance approach not me and what i will is fate so spake the almighty and to what he spake his word the filial godhead gave effect immediate are the acts of god more swift than time or motion but to human ears can not without process of speech be told so told as earthly notion can receive great te hum and rejoicing was in heaven when such was heard declared that almighty is will glory they sung to the most high good will to future men and in their dwelling spaces peace glory to him whose just avenging eye had driven out the ungodly from his sight and the habitations of the just to him glory and praise whose wisdom had ordained good out of evil to create instead of of spirits smelling a better race to bring into their vacant room and thence diffuse his good to worlds and ages infinite so sang the hierarchies meanwhile the sun on his great expeditions now appeared god with omnipotence with radiance crown of majesty divine sapiens and love immense and all his father in him shone about his chariot numberless were poured cherub and seraph portents 
and thrones and virtues wing its spirits and share its wing from the armory of god where stand of old mirage between two prison mountains lodge against a solemn day harnessed a hand celestial equipage and now came forth spontaneous for within them spirit leave attendant on their lord heaven opened with her ever during gates harmonious sound on golden hinges moving to let forth the king of glory in his powerful word and spirit coming to create new worlds on heavenly ground they stood and from the shore they viewed the vast immeasurable abyss outrageous as a sea dark wasteful wild up from the bottom turned by furious winds and surging waves as mountains to assault heaven's height and with the center mix the bowl silence ye troubled waves and thou deep peace said then the omnific word uh, your discord end nor stayed but on the wings of cherubim uplifted in paternal glory rode far into chaos and the world unborn for, for chaos heard his voice him all his train followed in bright procession to behold creation and the wonders of his might then stayed the fervid wheels and in, in his hand he took the golden compasses prepared in god's eternal store to circumscribe this universe and all created things one foot he centered and the other turned round through the vast profundity obscure and said thus far extend thus far thy bounds this be thy just circumference o world thus god the heaven created thus the earth matter unformed and void darkness profound covered the abyss but on the watery calm his brooding wings the spirit of god outspread and vital virtue infused and vital warmth throughout the fluid mass but downward burst the black tartarus cold infernal dregs adverse to life then founded then conglobed like things to like the rest to several place disparted and between spun out the air and earth self balanced on her center hung let there be light said god and forth white forth with light ethereal first of things a quintessence pure sprung from the deep and from her native east to journey through the airy gloom began shepherd in a radiant cloud for yet the sun was not she is in a cloudy tabernacle so john the wild god saw the light was good and light from darkness by the hemisphere divided light did the day and darkness night he named thus was the first day even and morn not passed uncelebrated not unsung by the celestial choirs when orient light exhaling first from darkness they beheld but day of heaven and earth with joy and shout the hollow universal or the field and touched their golden harps and hymning praised god and his works creator him they sung both when first evening was and when first morn again god said let there be firmament amid the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters and god made the firmament expanse of liquid pure transparent elemental air diffused in circuit to the uttermost convex of this great round partition firm and sure the waters underneath from those above dividing for as earth so he the world built on circumfluous water calm in white crystalline ocean and the loud mistrule of chaos far removed lest feast extreme contiguous might distemper the whole frame and heaven <coughs> he named the firmament so even the morning for us sung the second day the earth was formed but in the warm as yet of waters embryon immature involved appeared not over all the face of earth main ocean flowed not idle but with warm prolific humor softening or hull globe 
fermented the great mother to conceive, satiate with genial moisture when God said, be gathered now ye waters under heaven into one place and let dry land appear. Immediately the mountains huge appear, emergent and their broad bare backs upheave into the clouds. Their tops ascend the sky, so high as heaved the tumid hills, so low down sunk a hollow bottom broad and deep. Capacious bed of waters, thither they hasted with glad precipitance, uprolled as drops on dust conglobing from the dry part rise in crystal wall or ridge direct. For haste, such flight, the great command impressed on the swift floods as armies at the call of trumpet. For of armies thou hast heard, troop to their standards, so the watery throng, wave rolling after wave, where way they found, if steep with torrent rapture, if through plain, soft ebbing, nor withstood them rock or hill. But they or underground or circuit wide with serpent error wandering, found their way and on the washy ooze deep channels wore. Easy, ere God had bid the ground be dry, all but within these those banks where rivers now stream and perpetual draw their humid train. The dry land, earth, and the great receptacle of congregated waters he called seas, and saw that it was good and said, let the earth put forth the verdant grass, herb yielding seed, and fruit tree yielding fruit after her kind, whose seed is in herself upon the earth. He scarce had said when the bare earth till then desert and bare unsightly unadorned brought forth the tender grass whose verdure clad her universal face with pleasant green then herbs of every leaf that sudden flowered opening their various colors and made gay her bosom smelling sweet and those scarce blown. Forth flourished thick the clustering vine, forth crept. The swelling gourd up stood the corny reed, embattled in her field and the humble shrub, and bush bristled here implicit, last rose as in dance the stately trees, and spread, their branches hung with copious fruit, or gemmed, their blossoms with high woods the hills were crowned, with tufts the valley and each fountain side, with borders long the rivers. That earth now seemed like to heaven, a seat where gods might dwell, or wander with delight and love to haunt her sacred shades, though God had not yet reigned upon the earth and man to till the ground. None was, but from the earth a dewy mist went up and watered all the ground, and each plant of the field, which e'er it was in the earth, God made, and every herb before it grew on the green stem, God saw that it was good, so even and morn recorded the third day. Again the Almighty spake, let there be lights, high in the expanse of heaven to divide, the day from night, and let them be for signs, for seasons and for days and circling years and let them be for lights as I ordain their office in the firmament of heaven to give light on the earth and it was so and God made two great lights great for their use to man the greater to have rule by day the less by night all turn and made the stars and set them in firmament of heaven. to illuminate the earth and rule the day in their vicissitude and rule the night and light from darkness to divide. God saw surveying his great work and it was good for of celestial bodies first the sun, a mighty sphere he framed, unlightsome first, 
though of ethereal mold, then form the moon, globose and every magnitude of stars, and soared with stars the heaven thick as a field, of light by far the greater part he took. Transplanted from her cloudy shrine and placed in the sun's orb, made porous to receive and drink the liquid light. Firm to retain, he gathered beams, great palace now of light, hither as to their fountain other stars. Repairing in their golden urns, draw light, and hence the morning planet glides her horns. By tincture or reflection they augment. Their small peculiar, though from human sight, so far remote with diminution seen, First, in his east, the glorious lamp was seen. Regent of day, and all the horizon round, invested with bright rays, jocund to run. His longitude through heaven's high road. The grey dawn and the plates before him dance. Shedding sweet influence, less bright the moon. But opposite, in leveled west was set. His mirror with full face borrowing her light from him. For other light she needed none in that aspect. And still that distance keeps till night. Then in the east her turn she shines. Revolved on heaven's great axle. And her reign with thousand lesser lights. Individual holes. With thousand thousand stars that then appeared. Spangling the hemisphere, then first adorned with their bright luminaries that set and rose. Glad evening and glad morn crowned the fourth day. And God said, let the waters generate reptile with spawn abundant, living soul and let fowl fly above the earth with wings displayed on the open firmament of heaven. And God created the great whales, and each soul living, each that crept, which plentilessly the waters generated by their kinds. And every bird of wing after his kind, and saw that it was good, and blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, and in seas and lakes and running streams the waters fill, and let the fowl be multiplied on the earth. Forth with the sounds and seas, each creek and bay, with fry innumerable swarm and shoals of fish that with their fins and shining scales glide under the green wave in school that oft bank the mid sea, part single or with mate, graze the sea with their pasture and throw groves of coral stray, or sporting with quick glance. Show to the sun their waved coats dropped with gold, or in their pearly shells at ease. Attained moist nutriment or under rocks their food, in jointed armor watch, on smooth the seal, and, and bended dolphins play, part hues of bulk wellowing unwidely. Enormous in their gait tempest the ocean, their leviathan hugest of living creatures, on the deep stressed like a promontory sleeps or swims and seems a moving land and at his gills draws in and at his trunk spouts out a sea. Meanwhile, the tepid caves and fans and soars their blood as numerous hitch from the egg that soon brusting with kindly rupture forth disclosed their callow young, but feathered soon and flesh, they summed their pains and shoring the air sublime with clang despised the ground under a cloud in prospect. There the eagle and the stork on cliffs and cedar tops their Irish build. Part loosely wing the reason, part more wise in common. Ranged in figure ways their way, intelligent of seasons, and set forth their airy carven high over seas flying and over lands with mutual wing, easing their flight. So steers the prudent crane her annual voyage, borne on winds the air floats, 
as they pass faint with unnumbered plumes from branch to branch the smaller birds with song solace the woods and spread their painted wings till even nor then the solemn nightingale ceased warbling but all night turned her soft lays others on silver lakes and rivers beth their downy breast the swan with arched neck between her white wings mantling proudly rose her state with ory fit yet oft they quit the dank and rising on stiff peony towers the mid aerial sky others on ground walked firm the crested cock whose clarion sounds the silent hours and the other whose gay train adorns him colored with the florid hue of rainbows and starry eyes the water thus with fish replenished and the air with fowl evening and morn solemnize the fifth day the sixth and the creation last arose with evening harps and mantin when the god said let the earth bring forth soul living in her kind cattle and creeping things and beast of the earth each in their kind the earth obeyed and straight opening her fertile womb teemed at a birth in numerous living creatures perfect forms limbed and full grown out of the ground uprose as from his lair the wild beast where he once in forest wild in thicket brake and den among the trees in pairs they rose they walked the cattle in the fields and meadows green those rare and solitary these in folks pasturing at once and in bod herbs upsprung these grassy clods now carved now half appeared the tony lion pawing pawing to get free his hinder parts the springs as broke from bonds and rampant shakes his brinded mane the ounce the leopard and the tiger as the mole rising the crumbled earth above them threw in hill locks the swift stag from underground bore up his branching head scarce from his mold behemoth biggest born of earth upheaved his vastness flees the flocks and bleating rose as plants ambiguous between sea and land the river horse and scaly crocodile at once came forth whatever creeps the ground insect or worm those swayed their limber fans from wings and smallest lineaments exact in all their liveries decked of summer's pride with spots of gold and purple azure and green these as a line their long dimension drew streaking the ground spray not all minims of nature some of serpent kind wondrous in length and corpulence in bulk the snaky folds and added wings first crept the parsimonious emmet provident of future in small room large heart and close pattern of just equality perhaps hereafter joined in her popular tribe of commonalty swarming next appeared the female bee that seeds her husband drone deliciously and builds her waxen cell with honey stored the rest the numberless and though their names knowest and gave us the names needless to be repeated nor unknown the serpent subtlest beast of all the field of huge extent sometimes with brazen eyes and hairy mane terrific though to thee not noxious but obedient at thy call now heaven in all her glory shone and rolled her motions at the great first mover's hand first wheel their course earth in her rich attire consummate lovely smiled air water earth by foul fish beast was flown was swam was walked frequent and of the sixth day yet remained they wanted yet the master work the end of all yet done a creature 
who not prone and rude as other creatures, but endued with sanctity of reason, might erect his stature. And upright with friends serene, govern the rest, self-knowing and from then magnanimous to correspond with heaven, but grateful to acknowledge whence his good descends, thither with heart and voice and eyes directed in devotion to adore and worship God supreme, who made him chief of all his works. Therefore, the omnipotent eternal father, for there is not he present, thus to his son audibly speak. Let us make now man in our image, man in our similitude, and let them rule. Over the fish and fowl of sea and air, beast of the field and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps the ground. This said, he formed thee, Adam, the O man, dust of the ground, and in thy nostrils breathed the breath of life. In his own image, he created thee, in the image of God, express and though becomes a living soul. Male, he created thee, but thy consort, female, for race, then blessed mankind and said, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, subdue it, and throw out dominion hold over fish of the sea and fowl of the air and every living thing that moves on the earth. Wherever thus created for no place is a distinct by name, thence as thou knowest, he brought thee into the delicious grove, this garden planted with the trees of God, delectable both to behold and test and freely all their pleasant fruit for food gave thee. All sorts are here that all the earth yields, variety without end, but of the tree, which tested works knowledge of good and evil, though mess not in the day, though eats, though diest, death is the penalty imposed, beware, and govern will thy appetite, Let's seem surprise thee and her black attendant death. Here finish he and all that he had made viewed and behold, all was entirely go good. So even and morn accomplished the sixth day. It not till the creator from his work desisting though unwearied up return up to the heaven of heavens his high abode. Thence to behold this new created word, the addition of his empire, how it showed in prospect from his throne, how good, how fair. Answering his great idea up, he rode, followed with acclamation and the sound, symphonies of 10,000 harps that tune angelic harmonies, the earth, the air resounded thou rememberest for thou hardest the heavens and all the constellations round the planets in their station listening stood while the bright form ascended jubilee jubilant open the everlasting gate they sung Open ye heaven, your living doors, let in the great creator from his work returned magnificent, his six days work, a world open, and henceforth of for God will deign to visit of the dwellings of just men delighted and with frequent intercourse Peter will send his winged messengers on errands of supernal grace. So sung the glorious train ascending he through heaven that opened wide her blazing portals, led to God's eternal house direct the way, a broad and ample road whose dust is gold and pavement stars as stars to thee appear 
seen in the galaxy that milky way bit nightly as the circling drone dove ceased powered with stars and now on earth the seventh evening arose in eden for the sun was set and twilight from the east came on for running night when at the holy mount of heaven's high seated top the imperial throne of god had fixed for ever fame and sure the filial power arrived and set him down with his great father for he also went invisible yet stayed such privilege had omnipresence and the work ordained author and end of all things and from work now resting blessed and hallowed the seventh day as resting on that day from all his work but now in but not in silence holy kept the harp had work and rested not the solemn pipe and dulcimer all organs of sweet stop all sounds on fret by string or golden wire temp tempered soft tunings intermixed with voice choral or unison of incense clouds fuming from golden censers hit the mount creation and the six days that the sun great are thy works jehov infinite thy power what thought can measure thee or tongue relate thee greater now in thy return than from the giant angels thee that day thy thunders magnified but to create is greater than created to destroy who can impair thee mighty king or bound thy empire easily the proud tempt of spirits apostate and their counsel when thou hast repelled while impiously they thought thee to diminish and from thee withdraw the number of thy worshippers who seeks to lessen thee against his purpose serves to manifest the more thy might his evil thou usest and from thence createst more good witness this new way, new made world another heaven from heaven gate no far founded in view on the clear highland the glassy sea of amplitude almost immense with stars numerous and every star perhaps a world of destined habitation but thou knowest their season among these the seat of men earth with her nether ocean circumfused their pleasant dwelling place thrice happy thrice happy men and sons of men whom god had thus advanced created in his image there to dwell and worship him and in reward to rule over his works on earth in sea or air and multiply a race of worshipers holy and just thrice happy if they know their happiness and persevere upright so sung they and the empyrean rung with hallelujah thus sabbath kept and thy request think now fulfilled that asked how first this world and face of things began and what before thy memory was done from the beginning that posterity informed by thee might know if else thou seekest aught nor surpassing human measure say that brings us to the end of this book we'll meet you again on next sunday at 2 pm for the brand new classical work so stay tuned bye bye happy readings